A pleasant morning, everyone. Today, I am going to tackle about the novel of Jane Eyre, written by Charlotte Bronte. When Jane Eyre was initially published, the many admirers of the novel did not know, though some suspected that it had been written by a woman. Charlotte Bronte, who wrote the novel under the gender-ambiguous pseudonym Kerbal, knew firsthand of the challenges faced by an independent intellectual woman who lacked social station in Victorian English society. Her novel gives voice to the struggles of such women and the person of her bold, impassioned protagonist, Jane Eyre. Charlotte Bronte was born on April 21, 1816, in Yorkshire, England. When Charlotte was only five years old, her mother died and her father sent Charlotte and her sister Emily to join their older sister Maria and Elizabeth at a boarding school as they grew up. Charlotte, her younger sisters Emily and Anne, and their brother Brandwell entertained each other writing stories about imaginary lands. Charlotte taught as a school and briefly served two families as a governess, but the work didn't appeal to her. Charlotte and her sisters decided to open their own school. To prepare for this venture, Charlotte and Emily went to Brussels in 1842, where Charlotte studied French, German, and music. There, she fell in love with her teacher, but he was married and rejected her broken-hearted. Charlotte returned home two years later. In 1484, Charlotte published Jane Eyre to great success. Charlotte continued to write while caring for her elderly father. After rejecting several marriage proposals, Charlotte married the Reverend Arthur Bell Nichols. Only ruined months later on March 31, 1855, she died. In the early 19th century, critics often dismissed the work of women as light entertainment. Much of the writing by women was in fact sentimental, romantic, trivial, and written for popular consumption. Women like the Bronte sisters, who wanted to create more literary works during the times often found and the work would be taken more seriously if they used a male pseudonym. Jane Eyre was written during the Victoria era, which was a five of immense economic growth resulting from the Industrial Revolution, expansion of the British Empire, and increasing democratization. Still, the era had sharp division between the classes at the top with the nobility and the aristocrats. Next were the wealthy entrepreneurs who were able to interact with the aristocrats. Last were the lower classes, which included servants, governesses, farmers, blacksmiths, and so on. Members of the lower classes had to abide by strict rules of behavior in the presence of aristocrats. Servants were to do their work quietly, and even governesses carried an in-between status in Jane Eyre class plays a huge and how the characters interact with one another. Jane Eyre begins with 10-year-old Jane, living a life of torment with her aunt Reed and cousins John, Eliza, and Georgiana. One day, the apothecary Mr. Lloyd comes and suggests she go to school. A few months later, Jane goes to Lowood Institute, a poor orphan school. She makes friends with Helen Burns, who teaches Jane to control her passions. After typhus epidemic, after typhus epidemic passes through the school, Helen dies, and a new administration comes in. Jane finishes school and teaches there for two years before being offered a governess position. She takes the post and moves the thorn field where she falls in love with Mr. Rochester. One night, she saves his life 
when she puts out a fire in his room, but remains unsure who said it. Mr. Rochester tells her that a servant, Grace Paul, was responsible. Jane has called back to her aunt's estate because Aunt Reed is dying. On her deathbed, Aunt Reed tells Jane she does not regret the way she treated her. She reveals that her uncle John Eyre has been trying to find Jane to adopt her and leave her his fortune. Mr. Reed told him that Jane was dead. When Jane returns to Thorland, Mr. Rochester reveals that he is secretly in love with her. He asks her to marry him. Jane accepts, and they go to marry. However, the marriage is interrupted by a lawyer, Mr. Briggs, who claims Rochester is clearly married. Rochester admits that he married a mad woman and brings everyone back to Thornfield to reveal his wife, Bertha, living on a third floor cared for by Grace Pope. Jane forgives him but flees a Thornfield and ends up destitute. Mary, Diana, and St. John Rivers take her in, and St. John gets her a job teaching in their town. Eventually, he asks her to marry him and move to India, but she does not want to marry him because they are not in love. One day, he reveals to her a letter from Mr. Briggs, who is trying to find Jane so that she can claim her inheritance. It is revealed that the River siblings are Jane's cousins. One night, she thinks she hears Rochester's voice calling her name, and she goes to Thornfield. However, the manor is in ruin as Bertha had set a fire and jumped to her death. Jane visits Rochester, who is now blind and handicapped, and they agreed to marry. Ten years later, they have a son. Rochester's sight has been partially restored, and everyone is happy. Reader, I married him. The conclusion of Jane Eyre opens with a simple, bold statement, famously granting agency in a marital union to the woman rather than the man. So Jane Eyre is written in a first-person point of view, with Jane serving as narrator of the novel. Jane narrates from ten years later than the novel's end, meaning that she can both relate to her previous selves and comment upon them in hindsight. So the main quest in a Jane Eyre is Jane's search for family, for a sense of belonging and love. However, this search is constantly tempered by Jane's need for independence. She begins the novel as the unloved orphan who is almost obsessed with finding love as a way to establish her own identity and achieve happiness. Jane Eyre is one of the most favorite novels of readers all this time. The narrative itself is heartbreaking, romantic, inspiring, and unexpected. The character of Jane was beautifully crafted. Her independence and wise, mature attitude towards life is captivating and creates a strong, complex character, a strong, complex character who can be seen as a true role model. A traditional love story, a traditional love story it was not. However, the intense passion between Jane and Mr. Rochester is fiery and yet so romantic and heartfelt. One of the reader's favorite features of the whole novel was the narration of certain events from older Jane in addressing the reader's Bronte creates an inclusive narrative that the reader feels a part of. It was intriguing to see Jane's perspective on past events and just how much she can grow. So overall, it was a fantastic, well-written novel that will forever be a timeless classic, inspiring and transporting readers to another world. Thank you.